This is the 2023 Volvo S90 Recharge all-wheel drive ultimate. This is a plug-in hybrid, very similar to the Volvo S60 Recharge that I've already tested. This one has the same powertrain. It makes a combined 455 horsepower and 523 pound-feet of torque. So both the S60 Recharge and the S90 Recharge are the most powerful Volvo cars ever produced. What's going on everyone? Welcome to Shifting Lanes. My name is Hanson and for this video I want to give you my ratings and opinions on five categories. I want to talk about the exterior, interior, technology, the power and driving experience of this S90 Recharge so that you have a better idea before you buy. And at the very end of the video I want to give you my overall rating of this car. So if you want to jump into any of those sections check out the chapters down below. Without further ado let's get this review started and I want to talk about the power first. The S90, just like the S60, come in both gasoline and hybrid versions. The gasoline is actually a mild hybrid system. It's a mild hybrid system in a sense that it's there to help harness some of the energy back when you're hitting the brakes and then it will reuse that energy to accelerate and help you propel along. So basically your fuel efficiency gets improved. This S90 Recharge is a plug-in hybrid, which means that it can act like a normal hybrid, but it can also act like an EV, albeit for a shorter range. Now, what makes all of that possible? This one comes with a two liter turbocharged engine with direct injection. This engine makes a pretty healthy 312 horsepower, and there's also a 143 horsepower electric motor driving the rear axle in addition. So you put those two things together and you get that combined 455 horsepower. Like most other plug-in hybrid cars, the engine and the electric motor, they work in harmony, so it makes these plug-in hybrids some of the quickest cars out there outside of EVs and dedicated sports cars. Zero to 60 in the S90 Recharge is rated at 4.6 seconds. That is very quick for a 4,600 pound car. There's also an 18.8 kilowatt hour battery, which is the same size as the S60 Recharge. And you'll find that the battery size is a little bit bigger than traditional hybrids, but much smaller than full-blown electric vehicles. For example, the Hyundai Ioniq 5, which is a fantastic EV, has a 77.4 kilowatt hour battery pack. And that has a range that can go over 300 miles for the front wheel drive version. And to put things into more of a perspective, the 2025 Ram 1500 Rev will have a massive optional 229 kilowatt hour battery that will target a range of up to 500 miles. So the battery in that truck is 12 times the size of the battery you'll find in the S60 Recharge. Now the beauty of these plug-in hybrids is that you don't need a very large battery because this thing still has a gasoline engine. Still, the S90 Recharge has a very reasonable electric range of up to 38 miles. According to several sources, the average American commutes up to 41 miles per day. So if you keep this thing charged up overnight, you may not have to refill at a gas station for a very long time. And when you wanna charge it up, there's a J1772 plug on the driver's side. This is the smaller AC port, so you can't charge this thing up at a DC fast charging station. There is a 3.7 kilowatt charger on board, so you won't be able to charge this car any faster than that, which means that if you have a level two charger at home, you can expect about five hours to fully charge the car. If you have a level one charger or a standard 110 volt outlet then you're probably looking at eight hours worth of charging or basically charging it overnight which is very reasonable as for fuel efficiency this one is rated at 66 miles per gallon equivalent and that's assuming that you have a full charge if you're taking this thing on a longer road trip where this is going to primarily behave as a hybrid then you're probably looking at 29 miles per gallon combined the s60 recharge which is a smaller and lighter vehicle with the same hardware that's going to be rated at 74 miles per gallon equivalent and 31 miles per gallon combined as a hybrid. So for power, I'm giving this Volvo S90 Recharge a rating of nine out of 10. It's really very good, but it's not a 10 out of 10 because I wish that Volvo would at least increase the output or gave it 
a little bit more battery capacity for the S90 version. Instead, they just reused the S60 recharge hardware and put it into a bigger and heavier car, which means that everything else is just a little bit slower and a little bit more inefficient. Regardless, this is still a very good plug-in hybrid, and it allows you to experience that EV lifestyle without worrying about charging the car when you're on a longer road trip. Now let's talk about what it's like to drive, and I wanna first start with the driving modes. Since this is a plug-in hybrid, you can change up how the powertrain behaves. You can operate in hybrid mode, power, pure, and constant all-wheel drive. Hybrid mode is the default way the car operates. So basically the engine will kick in if it needs to. There's also pure mode and you could default the car to start in this mode as well. This mode is going to prioritize the use of the electric motor as much as it can, as long as there's juice. Or when there's a higher torque demand, when you're accelerating or have to go at a higher speed, then the engine is going to kick in at that moment. And then there's power mode. That's there when you want to have a little bit more fun. This will firm up the steering and the driving dynamics. It'll offer sharper throttle response. And you definitely want to switch to this mode if you're a car enthusiast and have access to roads like this. And then finally, you have constant all-wheel drive mode when you need that all-wheel traction. Now, as for the ride quality, while the S90 looks like a car that's made for a boss, the ride isn't as plush as one you'll find in the Lexus LS or other big luxury cars. It's still a relatively comfortable car to drive and elements of the interior, which I'll talk about in that section, those things add a lot to the driving experience. Handling wise, the S90 feels decent, but less fun than the smaller S60 counterpart. The steering gets nicely weighted when you have it in power mode, but it doesn't feel as direct as I would like. So this rides and drives more like a large executive car with a hint of performance car and not the other way around. So therefore I'll give the driving experience a rating of seven out of 10. This is a decent ride and a much better car to be driven in rather than to drive. Now let's talk about the design and let's begin with the outside first. The S90 has looked the same since its inception in 2016 as a 2017 model year. It looks bold and athletic. The front end has the bright chrome bars, the Thor's hammer daytime running lights, and LED headlights with automatic high beams. This S90 model has luxurious looking 20 inch alloy wheels. And since this is the recharge model, you'll find the recharge branding in several places. And at the rear, you'll find the LED taillights and then the S90 and the T8 all wheel drive recharge badging. This tester is painted in the platinum gray metallic color, which is a $700 option. And it gives it a very dark chocolate kind of finish. So I'll give the exterior design a rating of eight out of 10 because it looks like a proper luxury car without being too extravagant about it. Now let's talk about the interior design and much like the outside, the inside hasn't really changed very much either. You still get a beautiful dash with a nice combination of wood, metal, and plastic components. This tester that I have is a top tier T8 Ultimate S90, which means that you're going to get this crystal gear shifter from Aura 4 Sweden. All of the top level Volvos are going to get this piece. This is the most showy piece of the interior, but I think it complements the rest quite nicely. The rest of the transmission tunnel is pretty sparse. There's a panel that will hide the cup holders. There's your start stop engine dial. There's a parking brake and also your auto brake hold. The one thing that is sorely missed from this car compared to the 2022 model year is that this one is missing the drive mode dial. Now I've talked about this fairly extensively in my S60 review, but not having a drive mode dial in this S90 recharge is a big misstep. This is a plug-in hybrid vehicle, which means that it can operate as an EV, or it can operate as a hybrid, or it could also operate as a really fun performance car. And I should be able to change up how the car behaves very quickly. You could do so in the past by turning that dial, but in here, you have to go to the gear symbol on the screen, and then you have to go to the driving menu, and then at that point, you could change up your drive modes. There's just too many steps involved in here, whereas before, you could just spin that lovely looking dial. So Volvo, if you're listening, 
please bring that back. Now as for the infotainment system, I'll talk more about it in the tech section, but you'll find the same nine inch portrait oriented screen in the center. There's also a 12.3 inch digital driver display, and then there's a heads up display on the windshield. As for the steering wheel, it has a minimalist design to it while still maintaining nice tactile buttons. The leather free surface feels grippy and luxurious and having a heated steering wheel function is always nice. As for the seats, they're pretty comfortable and look upscale. The interior is called amber ventilated Napa leather with charcoal. So these seats are heated and ventilated. And in the second row, you'll find a massive amount of legroom at 40.4 inches and there's sufficient headroom at 37.8 inches. Now, if you look at the right seat, that should be considered the executive seat. And if you need to, you can control the front passenger seat with a toggle. You can also control the sunroof and the sunshades with these extra controls. As for the cargo space, there's 13.5 cubic feet of space in the trunk, which isn't great for this size car. And sadly, the second row in this tester does not fold down to give you more space. In general, there's a lack of storage solutions in this car. There's a very sad amount of storage space underneath the armrest, and there's also no place to wirelessly charge your phone. So for the interior, I'll give it a rating of seven out of 10. Sitting inside this car, it's very apparent that you're in a luxury car. The materials are great and the seats feel and look fantastic, but there's a couple of design issues like the lack of a drive mode dial and the storage I feel could have been easily addressed, but they weren't. Now let's talk about the tech and Volvo has been using Google built in in more and more of their cars. And this one has it as well. Basically, the infotainment system and the digital instrument cluster is built in part by Google. So this has a very good Google Maps navigation. You can download apps with Google Play Store, and it also works with your Google Assistant. The infotainment screen is a nine inch portrait oriented screen, and compared to other new cars, luxury brand or not, this is no longer an impressive screen size but it is large enough to do what it needs to do. The startup of certain apps can be a bit on the slow side, but once it's up and running, switching between the apps isn't so bad. And as for the instrument cluster, Volvo kept things pretty simple in terms of presentation and the amount of things that you can do to customize this display. Perhaps that's best because sometimes these screens can be very distracting. They tell you not to look at your phone when you're driving, but yet you have all of these screens to distract you. There's no over the top animation or customizable gauges in here. It's all very simple and straightforward. The only two modes you have here are the calm and the navigation style, which will display your Google Maps in the center. And when it comes to the Google built-in features, I think if you're a Google fan, you're gonna be pretty happy with the experience. And just like with newer cars with a lot of electronics in it, there's going to be over the air updates. This one is running version 2.7. When this system came out a couple of years ago, it didn't even have Apple CarPlay in it but that was introduced in version 2.2. Now you still have to plug in your phone to get Apple CarPlay. And as you can see, this is now a full screen experience. Not having wireless Apple CarPlay in this car isn't that big of a deal because at least personally, I still use a lot of Google stuff and all of that Google things are built into the car. So the wired Apple CarPlay is really only an issue if you're a big, Apple Maps or an Apple Music fan. Now, speaking of music, this has the Bowers and Wilkins premium sound, which is a $3,200 add-on. There's 19 speakers in this car and over 1400 watts of power. All in all, this is a very good listening experience in this car. And if you're a big fan of music, this is a worthwhile upgrade. And in terms of safety tech, Volvo has a very good safety track record, and this car has plenty of those modern safety features. There's a blind spot information system and rear cross traffic alert. There's forward collision avoidance, plenty of airbags, and the pilot assist system is very good. That's basically a combination of your adaptive cruise control and a very good lane keeping system. And on top of that, there's also a 360 degree camera view, which is a must for a luxury car. So from a technology perspective, I'll give this car a rating of eight out of 10. I think the Google features in this car are a nice addition and you should really see it as a tool to help you as a driver and not necessarily Google in its entirety because Google's very big. And yes, you will run into some bugs because no software is perfect, but thankfully, 
they will update this thing with over the air updates. So in the long run, the system should only get more reliable. So tallying everything up, considering the exterior, interior, technology, power, and driving experience of the S90 Recharge, I'll have to give this a rating of 7.8 out of 10. This is a wonderful plug-in hybrid vehicle from Volvo, and I think it's the perfect luxury vehicle to own this time right now as we transition from internal combustion engines to EVs. So while those EV owners are sweating the details about when to charge during their road trips, this thing is just going to keep chugging right along. So I wanna hear your thoughts on this, so please let me know in the comments below. If you've learned something from this video, please consider hitting that like, subscribe, and that notification bell so that you can be notified anytime I make a new video. Now, if you wanna see my review of the Volvo S60 Recharge, check out that link right over there. And with that being said, my name's Hansen. This has been the 2023 Volvo S90 Recharge, and I'll see you in the next one.